Hi everyone, welcome back to Spinning Web Flux Essentials. In this video, we are going to talk about transactions. So how can we actually enable transactions when working with R2DBC? It's pretty simple. You just have to add a transactional annotation and your transaction will be enabled. So let's give one pretty simple example here. Imagine that we have a batch save. So we have a batch save that's going to map to batch endpoint and we have one problem that uh, we are going to solve using transactions so what's the problem here when we have this list the at valid will not validate the internal uh, object so this basically will not work and for that we are going to create a method save all where we will get these enemies and then we are going to create the save all inside the the service okay so what we are going to do here we are going to receive this list of enemies it doesn't matter if the name is empty or not so for example here inside the postman let me do the following i will add the an array And this array will have three elements. So the first one is overlord, the second one will be overlord2, and the third one will be an invalid object. So since this add valid is not working, what we are going to do here? We are going to save all of them, and if we find uh, something that's not correct, in this case the third object is not right, we are going to roll back everything. In my opinion, this is not a good way to do in your own project that's going to production. I would do the validation before you actually try to save. But this is the fastest way for us to see the rollback uh, in action. So just add a transactional. And here we are going to do the following. We are going to return. And now it's not a mono, it's a flux. Same for the controller. And you call the save all, sending all the enemies. But then we are going to do validation by uh, one by one. And I will create another method here just uh, to check if the name is empty. And then we are going to throw an exception. So throw response status exception when empty name. And we are going to get an anime and we are going to use here string util from ionetti dot is no empty anime dot get name so if this get name is null or empty pro new response status exception http status bad request and then invalid name so with this we are going to call here on dual next and what's going to happen it's going to save and then if one of these objects throw an exception the transactional should roll back and remove all the data that we have in the database so let's see this uh, in action. I think we will get one exception, but let's see. So just to start your application, make sure you have database running. So going back here, we will execute the get. As you can see, we only have a uh, housing. And now we are going to execute this post. So we will get one exception here. If I'm not wrong, this slash batch. And as you can see, I thought we were going to get one exception. I think it will we will get an exception when it actually works. So it tried to save. Actually, it saved. Uh, all of them including the the third one that the name is empty but then after our validation 
the transaction was rolled back if we come here and we check all the attributes all the objects in the database we only have one now if we remove this one you will see now okay looks like uh, we have several ones yeah I was expecting getting uh, one error when we were trying to save the, the batch because the save all has a blocking inside but uh, I guess it only happened in my tests okay so as you can see we have all the attributes and if we just go to the database and we wipe this out And we get again. You only have one, and if we roll back this guy, you will see the transaction rolling back. Actually, I know why it's not failing because we removed block hound. This is the guy that should make it fail. So let's just uh, restart the application. now it definitely will fail there you go so the problem here is there is one blocking call that is uh, happening inside this random UUI ID so unfortunately there is not much we can do what we can do is uh, tell blockhound that this guy will be allowed so basically just call here builder.allow uh, blocking calls inside and then you give the entire package this is the method name so just copy this one and add as the second argument and here we don't need this one so now just uh, restart the application try to save again and you don't have that blocking uh, call again happening but the rolling back is still working okay so I think for this video that's enough let's stop for now and in the next one we will create the test for this transaction there are a couple of catches that we have to be careful so see you in the next video bye